So how do we truly leverage numerics for design? Good systems engineering is not just architectural. Good systems engineering is not just descriptive. Good systems engineering has an analytical dimension. That's where parameters and parametrics play a key role. I'm going to go ahead and open a sample model that I have called a new vehicle design. You may wish to look at fast food. You may wish to look at coffee maker. As this opens, earlier when we were browsing through the Project Explorer and we were looking at the property sheet, we saw that we have attributes, properties, parameters, and diagnostics. Attributes are the descriptive information about something. So here I've got a new vehicle model. This would be numbers, descriptions, purposes, types, etc. Properties are the genesis information. Parameters are the numerics that govern design. This, think of these as the design dependent variables. They are very close to attributes, but attributes are descriptive. Parameters are fundamentally numeric. And you'll see that there are a few differences here. For a given parameter, we actually have multiple fields. There is the objective value, what you're trying to hit. There's the threshold value, if you can't at least meet this, don't bother. There's the design value, which is the digital engineering value. If we did a digital calculation against the project, the design as it stands today, what's the value? And then observed, if you had a first unit, what do we actually observe? And then the units that go with each of these. All parameters are versioned by default because these are the key numerics, the design dependent variables. The other thing that's unique about parameters is they can be defined on the fly. So an attribute is something that you have to set up, a project administrator has to set, up, set it up either at the beginning of a project or, they, or midway through. Anybody can actually declare a parameter when they hit a numeric that needs to be managed. How would we do this? Well, we could click add remove. So here I'm in component. I've selected new vehicle in my model. I'm going to add remove. And in doing so, I see a set of parameters that have already been declared for this class. And I can see them. I could create my own. I could hit new and I could give it a name, an alias, a description, a type, etc. I'm actually just going to go ahead and select reliability add it, and we now see that I can specify the reliability here. Now, maybe I want to make it three nines of reliability, 0.999. That's interesting, but the other dimension of parameters is we often need to re reference those in descriptive text. We've all seen requirements that say the reliability shall be at least three nines. Well, how can we do that? If I go back to the attributes, in any text field, I now can reference one of those parameters. So right here in my description, I'm going to state the reliability shall exceed. Now, I don't want to type the value. I want to put in a reference. So I can right click, and I can insert a parameter. It shows me the parameters that have already been defined. I want the reliability and I want to go ahead and state the objective. Now, here in the text, this shows us a linkage. If I click out, it will now populate with the value from the parameter field. I cannot change the value here. If I want to change the value, I would need to go back to parameters because it's a managed numeric. Let's say we get relief, we only need two nines of reliability. We see it here. Anywhere that this text showed up, on a diagram, in a report, in a table, you would see it as native text. It would read the reliability shall exceed 0.99, end of statement. The other thing we can do here is, let's say that we're working in our description and we hit a numeric. Well, that's a perfect time to stop and create a parameter. So the per unit cost shall not exceed, I'm about to get to a critical numeric. 
I don't have to flip over to the parameters tab. I can simply right click right here, insert parameter. Now it turns out it's not predefined. It's not in this list, list either. I can go ahead and create it. So I'm gonna do new parameter and I'm gonna call this cost uh, alias. I'll capitalize it, no abbreviation. It does need a description per unit cost. And then again, what type? I'm gonna make mine an integer. And so I see that it populates here. Now I could come over to the parameters and say, uh, for marketing purposes, I want to, I'll prefer to be at 45,000, but I definitely have to stay below that magic 50,000 level. Okay, everything is, uh, whoops, typed that wrong value in dollars. So parameters give us a way of managing that. Again, you can declare them here on the parameters tab, or you can declare them on the attribute. Now I said when these show up on diagrams or in reports or elsewhere, it shows up as straight text. The other place that it often shows up, block definition diagrams, the technical variant of a hierarchy diagram often shows those values. So I've selected from new vehicle, I'm selecting my block definition diagram. I'm going to go ahead and change the properties here. I'm gonna to choose to show number, let's see, I've got name parameters. So that's what I want. And I'm gonna make my fields a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make them 250 by 180, okay. So this is how we often communicate the critical numerics, the design dependent variables. It's on a diagram such as this. So here I see there's my cost. Okay, so this has given us and by the way, as I hover over, you see how it shows up in the description. It's just as clean text. So this gives us the ability to specify the numbers. How about the ability to specify the relationships between the numbers? Effectively, the equations, the equations that govern the technical performance of our design and the equations that govern the business value of our design. We call those parametrics, we call those constraint definitions, effectively their equations. So what I can do here, first off from a physical view, so I've got a component, I can look at the constraint block definition diagram, and I will see in this model, I have two different equations that constrain my vehicle. One of them has to do with the cross section area, one of them has to do with the total weight. And so I see, the name of it, I see effectively the equation. When you see constraint or constraint definition, think equation. Then you can see effectively the parameters and where do they come from. So the constraint block definition diagram gives us a hierarchical view of the key equations and the corresponding parameters. The wiring variant of that is called the parametric diagram. If I select constraint definition, then I can effectively see a visual representation of an equation. I'm gonna start very, very simple. And I'm going to, in this model, I'm gonna look at force basic motion and look at a parametric view. And this allows me to express a few equations. Force is mass times acceleration. What's my mass? It's my total vehicle weight, which is curb weight, plus passenger, number of passengers times an average weight plus luggage. And the parametric diagram allows me to map these different concepts and represent them. Now I can be a little more sophisticated. I can look at a total required driving force and I start to get wiring diagrams like this that show us how the physics or the value function of our system interconnects. I construct this diagram the same way I do any other diagram. I add a new constraint definition, which is effectively an equation. I map it to parameters, where are these values coming from? I define mappings, which are the connections between the parameters and the corresponding values. Genesis itself does not solve these. 
We, however, expose them to other solvers. At a simplistic level, it would go to something like MATLAB if it was just a mathematical solver. At a more advanced level, if you were connecting uh, multiple existing models, we would go to something like Phoenix Model Center. Just so that you can see it, let me look at how we would solve that. Those are available in the utilities ribbon. And in the MATLAB section of the ribbon, we have a constraint solver. We walk through a wizard when we interface either with MATLAB or Phoenix to say, what is it that we're asking to solve? I'm gonna be simple here. I'm just gonna select a particular constraint definition. It asks me which one I'm gonna solve for total driving force. It generates a MATLAB script by analyzing the constraint definitions and populating all the variable values. I could copy this off, I could save it, or I can feed it directly to MATLAB. I'm going to execute the script. It's gonna flash up, it's gonna launch MATLAB for me, and it's going to run a solver in the background. When it comes back, it's going to have the solution for this. What this allows us to do is take the numerics of design, which are characteristics of our architecture, equations of design, the parametrics, and bring the analytical dimension in. So MATLAB has just solved for this. I can now update the parameters, which pushes that design value back in. So I'll update parameters. It will tell me these two were unchanged, these four were updated. So for example, drivetrain force basic motion is now 8217. So finish. If I come back to my component and I can look at my drivetrain, look over at the parameters, the values coming back are the design values. Objective is the target I'm trying to hit. Threshold is the level I must meet. Design is the digital engineering value. If I were to calculate based on our design right now, what would I get?